Welcome back to Trinity Bible Study. Yesterday we started in Acts chapter 8 and we were again introduced to Saul who was persecuting the church and he was taking Christians off to prison giving them time to think over their theology but it didn't work and they went out from there and they took the gospel everywhere they could and that is what created even a bigger problem for Saul which we will read about later on in the book of Acts. So we will pick up in Acts chapter 8 verse 5. And Philip went down to the city of Samaria and began proclaiming Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord were giving attention to what was said by Philip as they heard and saw the signs which he was performing. For in the case of many who had unclean spirits, they were coming out of them shouting with a loud voice. And many who had been paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was much rejoicing in that city. This is the early church, probably at its peak. And we see Philip going out to Samaria. Now, we have to understand what Samaria is. Samaria is not um, Jewish in the true sense of the word. They were considered to be kind of the dregs of Judaism, kind of the half-breeds and kind of the disillusioned form and practice of Judaism. And of course Samaria is located between Galilee on the north end and Judea, which is where Jerusalem is, on the south end of Israel. And so Philip doesn't know geography boundaries because the gospel goes to every man in every place, everywhere they can take it. And he goes to Samaria and starts preaching Christ. Now understand what that means when we say he preaches Christ. He does not preach a new religion. He preaches salvation through Christ. And whether you were a uh, dreg of Samaria or whether you were a refined Jew of Judea or a, uh, shall we say, angry fired up Galilean Jew, regardless of what you are or what you were, you were always looking for the Christ. The Christ is the Greek word we, we derive the word Christ from is the word Christos, which is a transliteration of the Hebrew word Meshach, which means the anointed one. And so they were all looking for a redeemer, maybe a redeemer of different sorts, but they were all looking for the Christ to come. And Philip takes to them the genuine Redeemer, the Anointed One, Jesus, the Christ. And he preaches that to them for salvation, and they are astounded by it. It is amazing what happens because whenever Christ is preached with purity, there will always be something to identify that great work. And it isn't what you've typically seen with a lot of the televangelists. That's not what it is. There is things that you cannot refute that are obvious evidences of the power of Christ present when the truth of the gospel is being preached. And sometimes that's an inward thing and sometimes that's an outward thing. Sometimes it's both. But he preached Christ with power and what happened? Well it talks about the unclean spirits, the demonics, came out of the people and they came out shouting in other words they were, they were angry because they had no residence anymore they could not stay there in the presence of Christ they could not stay there in the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit of Jesus they couldn't and they knew that and they came out screaming shouting it says they could not handle it and they left and those people were set free of their demonic oppression and possession and sometimes Christians have evil spirits in them still, but they need to get them out. And we only do that with the purity of God's word being preached and understood and applied to our sin-sick souls. Well, it also says there were wonderful physical healings. And that is what also happens many times when the power of Christ is preached. We see our prayers answered. We see our restoration made 
very complete even in our physical bodies sometimes. Now, let me say this. Every time the gospel is preached, it doesn't mean people will be healed. But it gives the doorway for God to do that through the Holy Spirit, if he is willing, and if we know how to receive that healing properly. You say, well, what's that trick? It's to keep your life completely surrendered to him. And doing away with all of our preferences, doing away with all our druthers, doing away with our ideals and what we think Christianity is or isn't. And that's a lot of times what blocks us from receiving the miraculous. It's what blocks us from really encountering God in a full sense by what we've built up our little egos and our little preferences and our little ideals and maybe our definitions of the faith that are not biblically correct or sound. And that's why we don't see the power sometimes around us when we experience the true gospel of who Jesus Christ really is, the Son of the living God, as Peter referred to him in that messianic proclamation when Christ had his disciples gathered at Caesarea Philippi. This is important, and the resolution to that was obviously in verse 8, when it says, and there was much rejoicing in that city. Well, I can imagine there would be, and there should be. And really, if we open our lives completely to Jesus Christ and to receive his Holy Spirit, we are going to see the miraculous. You say, well, that was through long ago. That doesn't work anymore. Oh, yes, it does. And it should. Now, the miraculous may not look like a sideshow in a circus like it's made out to be. And that's where we have to be careful that we don't have a predisposed opinion of what we've seen on television or what we've heard other people say happens in their church. And it's not that their church is bad or wrong, it's just that that's not always it. God can move in many and in varied ways and to accomplish everything that he wants to accomplish in us if we're willing to let him. And therein lies the key. These people were willing and they were open and God blessed them. He delivered them from the demonics and he healed their bodies and there was much rejoicing in that city as Philip preached Christ. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you that we can come to it and receive and apply the truth that we need to be everything you have called us to be. We thank you and ask you to bless us and guide us. These things we ask in Jesus' name and under his authority we pray.